Anyway, let's not wait on this. Here we go. Tonight's celebration appreciation, folks. My favorite television show of all time. And I went through a heartbreaking phase of this. And I can get into that a little bit as we go on. And I will be breaking my rules ever so slightly. But we'll try to remain best intact as I can. Anyway, here we go. 24! I love this show! Let's go! This show came back in, I think, September or November of 2001. Now, I did not watch this show when it began. The concept of 24 is simple. There are 24 episodes, and each episode is in real time, and they take place during the course of one hour of that specific day, consecutively. Crazy, right? It's, a, it's an insane concept, and the show really does make it work, though. I am not shitting you with this. This makes it work so well. So, wow, Anna, Anna's mom adored this show, huh? <laughs> but, um, so... This show has a, has a lot to I love the villains, the action. Uh, the, 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 there's actually a lot of heart to this show, believe it or not. A lot of heart in this show. Uh, really comes from the lead, Jack Bauer. So um, that guy is something. The thing Now, one, one thing you can't do with this show, though, is since it's sequential, it's like a big movie, right? Movies are my passion. When I first started out, I wanted to make movies. So 24 is like a big movie. Apparently, she watched it religiously. <laughs> But yeah, so so that's what Anna says, and so that's why this show probably holds a special place in my heart. And that I also love action. I'm a big fan of action. But as time went on, I liked it when action had drama and villains and heroes, and all oh, this has a lot of them. And assholes out the wazoo. Like there are real jerks and pieces of craps in this show. But I, we always consider Twenty Four like, like the show that has like the biggest assholes you could ever think of, and they are portrayed like that, right? I'm always annoyed when works try to portray assholes like, oh, but they're relatable. I'm like, they're an asshole. Fuck that guy. In Twenty Four, they're just meant to be jerks. And so you gotta appreciate the sincerity of that, the straight upness of that, and the purity of it. So, but 24 is a show that does not work in syndication. If you catch, like, one episode in the middle uh, on television or something like that, you're going to be lost and you're just not going to enjoy it. This is a show, really, you got to, like, start from the beginning. <laughs> Anna, can't have a good show without a few dick faces, lol. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but it, one thing about this show as well that I find it, it pulls off better than anything I've ever seen is that some of these straight-up assholes, they change in the show to, like, Really amazing individuals, uh, to even hero status, some of them, and it's done all. It's done several times in Twenty Four, and it never gets old. And I'm, it's always a little dangerous to do that, in my opinion, when you're telling a work of fiction, because it's almost like you're saying that these per this person's bad, but now we can forgive them and whatnot. And I've seen that uh, done poorly in other works of fiction. I will not list them out here in case someone's a fan of them. But let's just say, in Twenty Four, it works. In Twenty Four, it works on such a level that it's realistic. It feels great. And you really appreciate the character change. So, and it's amazing. And I can't describe it. It's, 24 is unlike any other show, and not just for the real-time aspect. It's just uh, something I've never ever seen before, and, and um, it's beautiful. And so there's a lot of, so the, so the plot synopsis of the very first day, um, day one, or season one of 24, centers around um, the, pri the presidential primary, right? Senator David Palmer is running for president. It's making a big deal because he's a black man running for president. This is back before Obama was elected, right? This is back in 2001. And so some people actually thought 24 was responsible. It might have helped with that. That's just people speculating and saying the stuff about that. I wouldn't be surprised. But yeah, this did happen seven years before Obama landed in office. So anyway, um, David Palmer is the Democratic candidate in 24. And uh, he's running in the, uh, yeah, uh, the presidential primary. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put much stock into what people say. Something else convinced that. I, I, I absolutely don't believe that in some ways like that. But that was sometimes how people talked about it. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. Obama got into office because of Obama. Because, <laughs> you know, he's cool. Anyway. Uh-oh, I pissed off the red side. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, which is funny. Because 24 is run by Fox as Republican as it gets. I know, I know this is getting a little political topic, but I just think it's hilarious. Because to me, this show, it doesn't have any of that crap. I mean, I think the, if there were any concerns, I'm sorry about the political side, folks. But I'm saying if they were trying to push a political agenda in 24, it kind of fell flat. It, it really didn't work because, you know, who needs that? It's just damn good entertainment. A lot of compelling characters and compelling storylines. So, so the story is... um. um the story goes, again, there's a presidential candidate, 
and he may and uh, they got uh, sent intel. The agency CTU got intel that uh, he may be assassinated. There's a very good chance that he's going to be assassinated. And Jack Bauer is the lead, played by Kiefer Sutherland, brilliantly played by the man. He is an excellent actor. This is like his greatest role. And um, his job as director of CTU, counter-terrorist unit, is to take care of uh, make sure that doesn't happen. Make sure David Palmer does not get killed. And uh, he's running for president, David Palmer, but he's still in the, the primaries. So he's still going up against the, in the Democratic Party against the other candidate to get nominated to be the presidential candidate. Right? So events occur in real time, as I said. So the first hour is, is like the first episode is called like um, midnight to 1 a.m. Right? So the start you know, the following takes place between midnight and 1 a.m. Events occur in real time. And that's how the show kicks off. And um, the very first scene of hour one shows them getting the intel for the credible threat to David Palmer's life. And um, it's established very early on that there is a mole inside the counter-terrorist unit that they have to watch out for. I'm telling you everything that's like in the first hour. So there is espionage. Espionage is a big tactic of this one. Politics is a big thing in this, as well as, um, like I said, action, violence, and <clears throat> and death. Death, 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 death. And this is just the first day. I could talk forever about 24, about the first day, and the brilliance, and the characters, and all that, but I don't have forever. So which is why we're going to break this into two parts. This is 24, part one today, and then maybe part two another time. <laughs> I just love this show so much. The progression. Um, also, it shows that in the beginning, uh, Jack Bauer also has a daughter, Kim Bauer. She's a 15-year-old girl. Very bratty at the end of the first day. Gets in trouble. Has a decent head on her shoulders, but gets into a lot of trouble. Jack's wife, Terry. Jack Bauer is the lead, played by Keeper Sutherland. Jack Bauer's wife, Terry. They get mixed up in a, in a situation that escalates very quickly. What happens very quickly is that Kim sneaks out of the house to hang out with some boys. You know, stay out, stay out late after curfew because she's a rebellious teenager. She's going through that phase, as it were. And um, as part of the day as go goes on, she looks like she got into the these boys she's hung out with um, are a lot more than what they seem. Uh, very troublesome. Not just the, uh, oh, those are bad boys, or, you know, just the kind of punch you want to beat the crap out of. Now nah, they have something more, and it has to do with Jack Bauer's situation. So it ties into his story right there as well. There are overlapping storylines, lots of character developments, so over the course of the show. And uh, Anna says, I do think the show has a very interesting concept. Yeah, just the concept was, was very <clears throat> compelling, but really what, what keeps you held into this is the actors. Gosh, because I'm going to be honest, I'm not a fan of the creators of the show. I, I separate creator from the fiction. I do not want to downplay any works of fiction. I believe those are like entities of their own who are beautiful and should be appreciated for each individual that it, that it touches. But when it comes to bad creators, I don't hold back on those people. They they are a pain in the ass. Especially when they try to shove get across bad agendas. And in 24, I think they were there were moments definitely that I think they tried to get across a bad agenda and it just failed. And it turned out working out well. Like they're trying to say this person is bad because of this, it ends up working because actually the person is good in the end. So it's like it's like they were incompetent. I honestly think there is a magic to 24, and I thank the actors and Keeper Sutherland for why the show turned out so brilliant. So I honestly thank them more than the creators. And I am not shy about saying that because, so aside from the concept of day one, stopping an assassination plot, day two involves a nuclear device being uh, be, potentially being detonated on a U.S. soil. Day three works with a virus. Day four, we are, uh, starts um, with like um, nuclear power plants are in danger as well as political uh, kidnappings. Day five, uh, this is day of season, each of the seasons. There are many seasons of 24. Day five works with a terrible nerve gas. And um, these are all the threats I'm talking about. Day six works with suitcase nukes, as it were, suitcase, nu suitcase nuclear bombs. And um, day seven works uh, is a is a credit is a mix of technological hijacking. So on a level of breaking down the technological infrastructure that everyone has put in place, like how how water systems work and everything. This is just like the early concept. There are multiple threats in every day, and I'm only talking up to day seven. Because that is the true length of 24. I'm going to say that right here. Anybody who enjoys the full show, that's no problem because there's more seasons after that. But really, eh, this is where I'm breaking my rules here a little bit. But really, nothing comes after day 7. Day 7 is the perfect ending to 24 that nobody can say is the perfect ending because the writer screwed up. <laughs> Season 7 really completes Jack Bauer's journey to what he's been seeking his whole life since, the, since season one began. Season seven really does. No one even realized it when they did it at the time, but it really finished it. 
It really is an ending. And honestly, the B and I, we can't watch anything without an ending. We were actually about to shelve this and throw away the entire series of 24 when we thought season 8 was the ending. And after that, when they came out with that other thing, that uh, that other one, Live Another Day, we when that was the ending, when I, I watched the endings, and I'm just like, these are not endings. This is the same thing that was the problem with season 8. And again, I'm breaking my rules here a little bit. But only for 24. I will only do this for this show. And I won't stay long on it. But what the writers ended up doing was keeping Jack Bauer around, in my opinion, for a very selfish reason. See, I, I, he, he couldn't find peace. He found peace in day seven, and they took it away in season eight to say he will always be out there to defend the people. I don't like that, because that's selfish, and that means Jack isn't happy. The show's not about us. The show's about the characters. Jack is no longer happy, and it's, and it's no closure, and no one really feels closure with any of it. And it ended on that note, and um, I know, poor Jack indeed, Anna. And um, anyone could take it how they want to see it. Truthfully, though, Season 7 has it all. It even has a lot of ending motifs in it that um, really could say that Season 7 to 24 is, in fact, the ending. Um, but I know I'm alone in this because the BNI only came to this conclusion about a year ago after 10 years of feeling depressed that my favorite show of all time had no ending. It didn't. It really didn't. They pretended, but Jack Bauer, just being that super agent who's just supposed to kill all the terrorists, all the all the all the bad guys for you for time and time again, that's just a high. That's not peace. That's not nice for a character. That's not something nice to write for a character. That is just flat out wrong. And when a character finds peace, leave him alone. So Jack Bauer had finally found peace. And now the B and I were very specific, though. We couldn't just pretend. Like, season 7 was really the ending. We don't pretend. We have to see if it actually works, you know? See if it, um, if it really is an ending. Or if there are, like, any real subtle hints in there that, that say if the show's going to continue with Jack Bauer fighting again. Or something like that. If there's something like that, like, re like real definite hints that um, say it's incomplete. Like, for example, there's, like, an evil imminent threat coming. It's been building up to that finale moment. And then you stop right there. Like, if you were to stop... At, uh, for example, Game of Thrones Season 7, when the, the Night King was still coming in and whatnot, technically that's not an ending. And even though the ending to, day eight, to Season 8 of, of Game of Thrones is not everyone's favorite, I didn't mind it personally, it is still an ending. And Season 7 of um, Game of Thrones, you just can't stop with. Fortunately, Season 7 of, of 24, you can stop right there. You actually do feel complete. It actually completes every storyline that needs to be said. Some are left a little bit ambiguous, but it's not like they were really bad. Ah, never watched Game of Thrones. Uh, yeah, uh, that was just one example I was throwing out there. Some shows you can't stop, and then you just have to deal with the fact that it was disappointing. And um, 24 is so special to me and the feller. That's why I call it the B sometimes, feller. Little feller. That we wanted to give it another shot. So we revisited, watched the whole series again, and... Oh my gosh, we actually broke down crying when we saw that actually Season 7 was an ending. Like I said, we weren't going to lie to ourselves. If it, if it wasn't an ending, it wasn't. But it was. And I think what worked in that favor was because a longtime director of the series, who always directs the season finale to every season of 24, was leaving in Season 7. He didn't come back for Season 8. So I think the writers at that point said they wanted to make it like a send-off to him, so they made it kind of an ending, but didn't really make it an ending. Because I can tell these writers, these creators, are the kind of creators that when it's actually time to write the end, they do a bad job. People have a hard time with endings. They freak out. It's like, it's, like it's their career, and it's like they can't let go, and they prolong it longer than it needs to be. And those the, the creators, the writers of 24, certainly are those kinds of people. They cannot write endings worth a lick when they know in their heads consciously that it's the end. If they can tell themselves it's just because they're sending off their friend, oh, they can pretend to make it like an ending. And that's how I think why Season 7 skated away with it. Like I said, there's a magic in 24, and it worked for it. And I'm so happy, so happy we can rewatch this show again and again and again and enjoy these characters again and again and again and know that it ends. Because here's something funny. The very first time you see Jack Bauer and his daughter Kim Bauer, two integral characters in the show, um... On, on the frame, Jack Bauer's on the right side of the frame. Kim Bauer's on the left side of the frame. No spoilers here. In the final scene of 24, season 7, Jack Bauer's on the right side of the frame. Kim Bauer's on the left side of the frame. And that's the, that's the last image you're left with. How is that not an ending? 
I'm not talking about just metaphorical or wishy-washy. There are actual ending moments of season seven. It is beautiful. And that's just season seven. All the days are wonderful. Like I said, I told you the threats of all the days. More characters come in. More conniving. More sinister sinisterness. Bigger dick asshole guys. It's just it's unbelievable. And there's even a conversation in the very first hour, the very first episode of 24 of season one, day one. A, a, a conversation about people try, uh, making bad decisions and trying to compromise for why they made the decision in the first place. And in Season 7, a very similar conversation, never before brought up again in the show, comes up in Season 7's final episode. Similar conversation bookended. I swear, there was somebody on the staff who was probably paying attention. And they wanted to send off the director with a big hurrah. Well... Again, for me, I'm thinking the magic, the essence of 24. I am, a, I am a believer that entertainment, depending on how wonderful it is and how touching, how powerful it can be, it can touch the souls at the, at, not even with the intention of the creator. I think it can surpass the creator, like how the child can surpass the, the parent. That's why I believe sometimes works of entertainments are kids that do better than its creator, and there is a magic in them. I really do believe in that. I'm a, I'm a, you can tell, I'm a very passionate guy about this stuff. So, 24. Thank you for still being in our lives, and thank you for being so special to come back to. I love you. Jack Bauer. I can like run through all the characters for you in day one. Jack Bauer, Kim Bauer, Terry Bauer, David Palmer, Sherry Palmer, Keith, Nap Keith Nicole Palmer, Carl. Just a random-ass guy right there. <laughs> and this is the first half. Uh, the, there's Ira Gaines. There's Mandy. Uh, Alberta Green, Ryan Chappelle, George Mason. Uh, I can remember these characters' names. It's how much I love this show. Uh, so yeah, Jamie Farrell, uh, Milo Pressman. Uh, Tony Almeida. There's <laughs> and this is just season one. Day one. Richard Walsh, I think was his name. At least Walsh was definitely his name. Alexis Drazen. <laughs> Alexis Drazen. Andre Drazen. Uh, uh, Ted Koffel. Um, there's also um, Alan York. And uh, Kevin Carroll. And <laughs> Janet York. Okay. And that's season one. 24. You wonderful work. Oh, yes, and also, Nina Myers. Infamous name right there. 24, I will love you to death. I will love you forever. Thank you for coming back into our lives, and thank you for correcting the mistakes of your of your makers. You've done wonderfully. Jack Bauer forever. 24, pachi, pachi, pachi. <laughs> Folks, if you're in for a thrill ride and a surprise, check this one out. And stop at season seven. You're free to go at your leisure to go on beyond that, by all means. But you'll see what I mean. How if you want to stop at seven, you can. And I think you very well should. Ah, uh, thank you, Anna. Twenty-four for the win. Thank you, and um, thank you all, folks, so much for sticking around for this. This one really means a lot to me. I literally broke down in tears when I thought I had to give away uh, and not have this show anymore. Back ten years ago, I really did. Anyway, thank you, twenty-four again. Now let's move on.